Okay, so this video for food and health is going to go over the nutrition transition and associated regional variations of food consumption and nutrition choices. So first of all, the nutrition transition. So this is a model used to describe the shift in diets, physical activity, and the causes of disease that accompany changes in economic development, lifestyle, urbanization, and dem dem <laughs> demography. I don't know how to say it demography or demography um but basically like changes in the population structure so let's kind of give like a summary so pattern one the first pattern here is paleolithic man slash hunter gatherers so the kind of food is mainly wild plants animals water it's very labor intensive and people tend to be very lean um, high disease rates, low fertility, low life expectancy, and then as you kind of move and develop into the next stage, settlements begin, monoculture period, famine emerges, cereals dominate, water labor intensive still, um, but you know, less wild plants and animals, it's more like um, kind of moving into the idea of agricultural settlements, and here you see nutritional deficiencies emerging, and stature declines and you have high fertility because there is some kind of there is some nutrition there's high um what the heck i don't know what mch is child i don't know wait i'm honestly not sure i think it might be maternal but i'm not sure okay there's still low life expectancy and then you just shift on to pattern three you get industrialization stages receding famine so there's more agricultural progress you have starchy low variety low fat high fiber foods water still labor intensive but there's more kind of work and jobs um and home work from home i don't really know what that means exactly labor intensive work jobs okay whatever um mch deficiencies okay well i honestly i'm not sure what mch stands for and i can't seem to find what it stands for okay i'm gonna look again okay i think it might be from low iron so okay so iron deficiencies i guess weaning disease stunting um and you in this one you have slow mortality decline so life expectancy is probably rising here then you move on to pattern four, which is kind of the um, tra the stage of non clinical diseases. So you have increased fat, sugar, processed foods coming with kind of urbanization, uh, caloric beverages, shift in technology of work and leisure. So it's less labor intensive. Obesity emerges, and a range of other non communicable diseases. Um, and the life expectancy does rise, but you kind of do still have this kind of rise in non communicable diseases, um, increased disability periods too. Okay, then finally you have pattern five, which kind of tends to occur in high income countries, like countries that are have a lot of education and awareness of like health, so desired societal slash behavioral change. So here you see reduced fat, increased fruit and vegetable vegetable um CHO. I don't know what else that would mean except for carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, which is like, um, I guess like carbohydrates and lipids or something. And then you have fiber, increased water, reduced caloric beverage intake, replace sedentarianism with purposeful activity. So you're not, you know, have it, you're having an active lifestyle to improve your health because you're aware. And then that leads to reduced body fatness, reduced non communicable diseases um and then you have extended health aging and it, as i mentioned reduced um non-communicable diseases okay now we're going to look at the patterns of kind of nutritional intake so this is average per capita fruit intake versus the minimum recommended guidelines so the countries below the dietary guidelines are kind of centralized in asia um eastern europe parts of africa um and a little bit of south america um yeah and then we have average per capita vegetable intake which below dietary guidelines is kind of most of south america most of africa quite a bit of asia and parts of europe too um 
and then we have average consumption of sugars and sweeteners and the kind of highest more than a hundred grams per person per day is australia most of you are pretty much all of north america a lot of south america um well not all of it though um and then the rest kind of are quite uneven in their consumption you have low and you have mid moderate and you have some high like libya for example um yeah and then we have coefficient of variation in per capita caloric intake so this basically shows um the inequality of caloric intake so like the the disparities between how much people are intaking in a certain nation so in a country in countries in kind of central africa and china um there's like large disparities between those who have a lot of calorie intake and those who have very low intakes whereas in a place such as um i don't know like south africa for example well it's like not not like the highest i mean the lowest but it's a relatively low there's kind of more equal spread amongst different people in terms of how much they're intaking in terms of caloric um like calories basically okay where meat consumption is highest and lowest so in 2014 the highest meat consumption was in kind of north america united states australia and parts of south america and then the lowest was kind of uh, concentrated in Africa, India, and other Southeast Asian countries. Um, so just keep in mind these kind of like variations and the idea of the nutritional transition model.